I woke up thinking about Migdalia Cruz's play, Cigarettes and Moby Dick. It's something that I directed more than 15 years ago in the warehouse attic uh, at 14, no, at, what was it? What was, it was on 7th Street um, at the intersection basically of 7th and New York Avenue and Northwest across from where the convention center is now. And I had, I staged in every, every nook and cranny of the warehouse theater, the main stage, the theater next door. And Molly let me use the attic because it's all I could afford. And uh, the pigeons had lived up there. There are holes in the windows that Paul had recently fixed. And so the pigeons were living up there and then they had left, but the rafters were still very dirty and it was summer and I would be up there by myself in the heat, like 90 degrees with a broom and one pigeon found its way back in there and scared the hell out of me. And I was screaming and it was flying at me. And I would go down three flights to the cafe where, um, you know, dignified people were having coffee and I'd just be covered in sweat. And I, I remember, uh, having different elements in each of the three rooms. I wanted water and air um, and fire in the kitchen. And uh, Paul Kelm designed that set. And for some reason this morning, I was waking up really thinking about that script and how much Migdalia Cruz, how much she learned from Maria Irene Fornas, her, her teacher, you know, and how much Migdalia loves, you know, the canon. She loves the master works uh, and Melville, you know, so it was really a riff on Melville's Moby Dick. And, but the way that she did it is, you know, the whale became symbolic of woman and being hunted. And, you know, when you, when you look at that novel, there's like a mini novel inside of the novel where Melville like talks about all the different kinds of whales and, and a lot of people hate that. It goes on for so long. But at the time, the only source of, well, the main source of fuel, I should say, was whale oil that was highly desired and very lucrative. So this is another time where natural resource is being hunted and exploited. Uh, and so when he defines all these different whales, it's all these different ways he could possibly make money. Um, and, and then we have Miranda, you know, a nod to the Tempest, but Miranda in there is our main character, um, with, yeah, with this obsession with, with Moby Dick. And I just, I think it was so liberating to work on that. I've talked before about how I had to kick the bathroom door in, but some of the staging, I had my one actor standing on a radiator with a noose around her head neck and like throwing open the window getting ready to jump she would brace herself in the window and uh at one point like paramedics were stopped in traffic and kind of looked up and saw her like you know should we run up and is somebody about to jump and it's like no it's just a play and uh and, and just like the hammocks with the guys and how grotesque that was but how funny it was and I, I don't think we'd be able to produce that right now in, in the climate that we're in because there's just not enough trust um, and there's not enough money, you know. Back then we did it because we really, we believed in it. I paid everybody a stipend um, and we were doing work that was not getting done. It had never been done in the United States. And many of the plays that I've produced just have, have never been produced before. So it's... It, there was no big house that was going to take them in. Like Ugly Ducklings, for example, the script was older than the actors, right? The script was 18 years old and we had actors who were 10. Um, and I know Carolyn tried to, Carolyn Gage, the writer of that, tried to get that produced at Arena Stage and all these places. They said, no, 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 we're not going to deal with homophobia in a girl's summer camp in Maine um, and attempted suicide. And uh, then that was nominated for a Theater Critics Award. And so... I guess what I'm just sitting with and waking up thinking about is how amazing it's been to be able to take these risks and create this work that really makes people feel um, viscerally react. Like there would be gasping. In Cigarettes and Moby Dick, she would cut her tongue and the way we had it set up, she just shot and then there was this blood and there were times where women, people would just ah gasp and have to leave the room and 
the the physical responses like the way the audience really wanted to feel they were tr the audience was trusting and the actors were trusting they were willing to go there they were willing to take this journey knowing it's a play knowing it's not really happening and so they could go places and then step back out again and uh i just i i feel like in the later um shows that i've directed i've just been corrected so much a lot of times by my actors about my vision um as the director so it's 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 been so strange to create opportunities for people who want to rob me of my facilities <laughs> um yeah yeah it's been really super interesting and i think that was on my mind this morning and it's just kind of what i wanted to talk about today <laughs>